but he went there for us. And so this morning, it's Palm Sunday, and what better way than we get to come together and just honor him with our worship and our praise. Amen. So we just honor you this morning.
because of you. Oh, you brought me back to life. 
pay when something says I'm not worthy I'll point to that empty grave and just like Lazarus oh you are mine. The enemy thought he had me, but Jesus said you are mine. The enemy thought he had me, but Jesus said you are mine. The enemy thought he had me, but Jesus said you are mine. Oh 
You go before me, I know that you've even gone to win my war. You come back at the head of my enemy. You come back and you call it my victory.
Let's sing that again, Katie. Come on, just sing that that bridge again. Give me Jesus. Give me Jesus.
him tonight today. Come on, do you want him more than anything else? Are you desperate this morning for all that he is? Let's lift his name up in this place. Yeah, Lord, you're worthy. Yeah, come on, press in. Therefore, God himself, he placed him in the highest honor and gave him the name that is above every name. This morning, when we sing those lyrics, give me Jesus, I want to share with you for a moment what you're asking him for. He is Jehovah Jireh, the Lord, your provider. He's Jehovah Shammah, the Lord of peace. He's Jehovah Rohi, the Lord my shepherd. He is Jehovah Nisi, the Lord my banner. That's who you're asking for this morning. He's Jehovah Rapha, the Lord our healer. He's Jehovah Sidkenu, the Lord our righteousness. He's our most high God. See, knowing him intimately is important because you have to know him and experience him. Are you doing that this morning? This morning, here's a small glimpse of who you're worshiping today. He is the creator God. He is your redeemer. He is your sanctification and he's your guide. In Joshua, he's your mighty conqueror. In Judges, he gives you victory over every single enemy. In Ruth, he's your kinsman, your lover, your redeemer. In Samuel, he's the root of Jesse. Come on, somebody. He's the son of God. He's the king of kings and the Lord of lords. He is your intercessor this morning and your high priest. He is your temple, your house of worship. He is your mighty wall, and he is protecting you on every side. He stands in the gap to deliver you from every enemy. He is your arbitrator, and he only he understands everything that you're going through. In Psalms, he's your song and your reason to sing. In Proverbs, he's your wisdom, helping you make sense of life and to live it successfully. He is your lover. He's the rose of Sharon. I love Isaiah calls him the wonderful counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. In Lamentations, he's your ever faithful one, the one that you can depend on. In Ezekiel, he is your wheel in the middle of the wheel, the one who assures you that the dry bones will come to life again. In Daniel, he's the ancient of days. Come on, somebody. In Hosea, he's your faithful lover. He's beckoning you always to come back to him. In Joel, he's keeping you safe from every trouble. In Amos, he's your husbandman, the one you can depend on to stay by your side. In Obadiah, he is the Lord your God, the kingdom of the Lord. He is the Holy One. He's your witness. He overthrows every enemy and every obstacle. He's the Lord of hosts, somebody. He's the King of the Jews. Woo. He's the Son of Man. He feels everything that you feel. In John, he's the Son of God. In Acts, he's the Savior of the world. That's who you're asking for today. In Galatians, he's your liberty. He's the one who is setting you free. In Philippians, he's your joy. Do you need some joy this morning? Come on, give me Jesus. In Colossians, he's your completeness. In Thessalonians, he's your hope. Come on, give me Jesus. In Timothy, he's your faith. He's your savior. He's your protector. He's your life. Come on, give me Jesus. Give us Jesus. Yeah. Father, this morning we thank you today that we get to come into your presence. 
and we get to experience your attributes, Lord. We get to experience your character today, Father. Not only to know about it, but we get to taste and see, Father, who you are. And today, Lord, I thank you for your presence in this house. I thank you for who you are in every area of our lives. I thank you that your word says that you are protecting us and keeping us and preserving us from every angle. <laughs> you are so good today. We thank you that you are here, Lord. We want to take the position of Moses and we want to turn aside from every distraction. We want to turn aside from every weight. We want to be like Moses today. We don't want to miss what you have. We want to turn aside and we want to focus on who you are. We honor you today. We worship you. You are the name above every name. There is no one like you. If you believe that this morning, would you just lay your hands on the person next to you and just say, Father, give them every part of who you are in every situation of their lives and everything that they're going through show yourself strong on their behalf come on there may be somebody standing next to you in the service today or somebody online who needs you to just remind them that they can have all of Jesus in every season in every season Father we're careful this morning to give you praise and to give you honor and glory. If you believe that, would you lift your praise up to the Lord one more time this morning? We thank you, Father, for who you are. You're so worthy. You're so worthy. Oh, good morning. I get the privilege to follow that. Wow, that was awesome. Oh, it's good to see you today. If you're new with us this morning, we are so thankful that you're here and with the Mission family. Just so welcome you. Um, if you fill out a Connect card, you can take it to the cafe and get a free drink today or bring it back next week and they'll give you a nice free coffee. So, welcome. Welcome to the mission. Welcome to the ones that are online. So glad you're here with us today. Um, a few announcements. Joe, I'm going to change it up a little bit on you. A few announcements this morning. Today is our first Sunday of the month. So we have our first Sunday lunch, which is following service. Over, I believe they're in the gym or out in the courtyard there. And we just get to hang out and have some lunch. But the um, young adult group is also selling lunches today. Oh, there's two free tickets. All right. Is it somebody's birthday today? Anybody's birthday? How about an anniversary? No anniversaries? Forest? All right, here. It's on Thursday? This forest. Here, come get it, forest. Awesome. Let's see. Who, who else should we give this away to? Um, April Clark. Come on, Clark. Come on down. Clark's turning 50 this year. <laughs> Here you go, Clark. But they'll be selling lunches out there. It's pulled pork sandwich and homemade potato salad and homemade chocolate chip cookie. So you can get that out there. You don't want to miss that. Um, and then we have our Easter egg hunt coming this Saturday. Can you believe Easter is already here? So our Easter egg hunt is this Saturday at 10 o'clock. There's some cards out in the foyer, and there should be at the giving stations also that you can take this out. Hand them out to your friends and neighbors so they can bring their kids and be blessed on Saturday. And then Sunday is Easter Sunday. How many can say Easter Sunday? All right. So there's, and there's Resurrection Sunday. Whatever you like to call it, it's this Sunday. 
at 10 o'clock. Yes. I, I won't tell a bad, really bad joke right now. My mom is staring at me playing, please don't, please don't. <laughs> so we got cards. Take them to your family and friends to invite them on Easter Sunday, which is next Sunday, 10 o'clock. But I, I need to ask another favor of you. Will you at least hear me? It's really important when people that are visiting or coming for the first time that they don't walk into an empty room. It's not very inviting. So my challenge to you for next week is to be here before 10 o'clock. So by 10 o'clock, you're here ready to worship, and you can greet these new people that are with us next week. Can you guys do that? Just one, I'm just asking for one week. You be here. Come for coffee. There's coffee beforehand. But come, be here before 10 o'clock. So by 10 o'clock, we're in here ready to worship together. All right? So take the cards, invite people. And then we have April 23rd. We have the Shriers with us. They are amazing. Shannon and Nancy Shire will be with us on Sunday morning, the 23rd. And Nancy will also be with our Empowered Women the day before that, which Kim's going to come here in a little bit and give you more information about that. But you don't want to miss that. That's April 23rd. All right. It is my privilege this morning to receive our tithes and offerings. There's different ways to do that. You can give online. You can give through the app. You can text it, or you can just drop in the giving stations throughout the room. So that's how you can give. But we believe in declarations around here. We believe that for something to happen, you got to declare it. Yeah, if you're not willing to declare it, you're probably not going to do it. So we're going to declare an offering this morning. So if you can stand with me. Here we go. Ready? You got to do it with me. Here we go. We, the mission, are thankful that God is our financial source and declare that his resource is unlimited and not tied to this world's economy. We, the mission, are thankful that God's promises are true and declare that our God is more than enough. Therefore, we give thanks for anticipated financial increase and inheritances, settlements and rebates, promotions and bonuses, gifts and surprises, debts paid off, bills decreasing, and blessings increasing. Amen. So, Jesus, we just bless everyone that's in here and online this morning, that you will bless the seed that has been sown today and bless the person sowing it. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, don't sit down. Greet people around you. Go to the giving stations. Just love on each other.
family and the whole city of Solano County. Isn't the mission the best, you guys? Do you believe that? We have an incredible church. Okay, empowered women. Everybody say empowered women. If you're a woman in here, really say it. Empowered women. <laughs> so it's April the 22nd. Put that on your calendar from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. with special guest speaker Nancy Schreier. Listen, ladies, you don't want to miss this. She's the senior, she's a part of the senior leadership of God's place in Utah, Ogden, Utah. She has a powerful anointing. She's a gifted preacher, and I, I'm telling you, she is not just gifted, she's fun. Nancy's also the women's leader at the church that she is a part of there in Ogden, Utah. And Nancy leads the women's ministry, and she has been called to bring healing and freedom and restoration over women all across this region and beyond. And listen, She's excited about coming. So today you can register either online or you can register out in the MA foyer with Paris and um, Des will be out there today. But get registered. Last year they had over 80 women. Today, this, this on the 22nd, we're shooting for over 100 women. Come on, we can make that happen. So girls, ladies, you know how it works. All you have to do is tell a friend. Listen, if you tell women, they will come. If women tell other women, they will come. So just tell your girlfriend, invite your neighbors to come. It's going to be an incredible atmosphere. Not only are you going to be able to hear from Nancy on the 22nd of April, but you're going to get fed. That's good, women. Yay, we like food. It's going to be super fun. So make sure that you invite somebody. There's also cards in the MA4 year. You can pick it up. There's a QR code. If you just give it to somebody, your coworker, your neighbor, you can, they can scan the QR code. It takes them straight to the registration. Or again, you can register in the MA for you with Paris and M. Ladies, are you going to come? All right, let's do this. Thank you, Kim. Good morning. Good morning, good morning. Listen. <laughs> You will be so disappointed if you do not go to that women's thing. Nancy is one of my favorite people to hear speak in the world. She is fun, 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 fun. Uh, guys, I, I'm probably going to try to slip into the back of that thing because she is just such a hoot. She's, she's uh, so irreverent. Love her. You know? Yeah, you're going to, you don't want to miss it. You really don't. <laughs> you will be, and the food's going to be amazing. I don't know who's cooking it, but I'm sure it's good. It'll be good, yeah. But Nancy's just just a ball to be around. She's great. She and her husband, husbands, will be here the next day, ministering on Sunday morning. And uh, they're they're wonderful, wonderful people. Uh, Caleb's mom and dad. That's right, Caleb, who has been here, did so much for us all right are you here yes. glad to hear it glad to hear it. sorry we missed last week but i had a wonderful time with my grandkids in alabama Yay. alabama that was really really tremendous to, to see them and spend some time with them personal time and family time with their family there it was really important for me to do that so thank you so much for uh, allowing me to be gone on a, on a very important day for the mission, but uh, I mean, allowing me, you didn't have anything to do with it, but uh, for giving me grace to do it, yeah, extending me grace and not looking at me like you're angry this morning. This is good. All right, well, uh, we have the joy of doing our war chest this morning. I, I want you to really get ready for this. Uh, we, you know, our war chest is designed for projects at home and around the world that we do specifically uh, for missions and uh, various different things, even within the house here. And they're very important times, and you guys have been so absolutely generous uh, year after year and month after month as we do it on the first of the month, typically. But this one is uniquely special to this house. Um, 
There was a man who for over 30 years walked this property five days a week in the early morning hours and prayed over it. He would walk the entire perimeter and pray into it. He served on our council for most of those 30 plus years. And uh, we, are going to, we are going to build a prayer garden here on this facility in honor of Ted Deeming. And uh, yeah, it was Ted. Ted recently went to be with the Lord. We miss him desperately. And it's going to be in this corner of the building. It's right over here. And that corner is going to be turned into a gorgeous, gorgeous garden where people can go and meditate and pray, sit on benches and tables and uh, have fellowship together in that place and be dedicated to the man we love so much and miss so much. And it's good to have Hope in the house this morning, his wife, Hope is over here. Thank you, Hope, for coming today. So the, our, our war chest offering this morning is to begin that project. So this will be the seed offering into that project. So we ask you just to be as absolutely generous as you, as you, uh, as you can uh, to, to seed this project this morning. Uh, this is just... Overwhelmingly good yeah. this morning. So if you want to follow this young lady, <laughs> why don't you stand up and start doing it? Start doing it. You can give, of course, as you know how to give with a variety of different ways online and with your phone, all those things are here in the, in the war chest offering this morning. So just go ahead and come on and give. Thank you so much. Yeah, you can keep coming up. I'm, I, I, won't, I won't stop you. So, uh, thank you so, 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 so much. Well, this morning is, uh, as somebody mentioned earlier, it's, it's Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday is a recognition of the day in which Jesus came through into Jerusalem. It was at a time just a week before his death and resurrection. So it's a very special week. This week is uh, a week in which many celebrate the various points at which Jesus suffered during this week. Um, so we want to look at that, and I thought, you know, let's, let's just read the story. This would be okay. Be okay with you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah good. Uh, I'm glad. Oh, one other thing. Uh, Starting next week, we'll be releasing an uh, audio version of We Have Decided, the book based on seven declarations, seven prophetic words by Ivan Tate. Uh, Ryan and I have recorded those sessions, and we'll be releasing them on audiobook. You'll, just a look in your email starting next week. You'll receive one a week, uh, a different chapter every week, and um, enjoy that. Uh, I would encourage you to get the book, too. It's in the bookstore. It's very inexpensive. Just pick it up so you'll have it. You can read it along with seeing it. You know that our, our gates of receiving things are multiple, and when we receive them in multiple ways, we, we hold on to them better. So both hearing and seeing would be significant. So I encourage you to do that. They're in the bookstore there. It's called We Have Decided. Looks like that. All right. And again, watch, your, watch for your email. It'll be coming uh, probably midweek, uh, each of the weeks. You're so quiet this morning. That's encouraging. That is encouraging, yes. Okay. 
Somebody said this morning, are you speaking this morning? I said, well, it's my hope. Um, here we go. Triumphant, triumphant, triumph. Jesus coming into Jerusalem. <laughs> what is going on this morning? My goodness. <laughs> yep. Mm. Water's really good. This is Fiji water, by the way. Fiji water. Oh, here we go. When he had said this, he went on ahead going up to Jerusalem. And it came to pass when he drew near to Bethphage and Bethany at the mount called Olivet, that he sent two of his disciples saying, go into the village of opposite you where as you enter, you will find a colt tied on which no one has ever set. Loose it and bring it here. And if anyone asks you, why are you loosing in it? Why are you letting it go? Thus you shall say to them, because the Lord has need of it. So those who are sent went, and they found it just as he said to them. I mean, I got so many questions about just those few verses. Like, how do you know it's a cult that nobody sat on? I mean, like, it's like they're a sign. I don't know. Others, yeah. Oh, well, never mind. <laughs> but as they were untying the cult, the owner said to them, "Why are you untying my cult?" And they said, "The Lord has need of him." Then they brought him to Jesus, and they threw their own clothes on the colt, and they set Jesus on him. And as he went, many spread their clothes on the road. Then as he was now drawing near the, the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and praise God with loud voice for all the mighty works they had seen him, had seen him do, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest." And some of the Pharisees called out to him from the crowd, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. But he answered and said to them, I tell you that if these should keep silent, the stones would immediately cry out. Now as he drew near, he saw the city and he wept over it, saying, If you had known, say this with me, if you had known. If you had known. Even you, especially in this your day, say your day, your day, the things that make for your peace, but now they are hidden from your eyes. For days will come upon you when your enemies will build an embankment around you, surround you, and close you in on every side, and level you and your children within you to the ground. And they will not leave in you one stone upon another. Now listen to this. Because you did not know the time of your visitation. This is your day. If you had known it was your day. But because you didn't know the day. You didn't know the time of your visitation. There's a couple other uh, translations. The Message Bible says it this way. Because you didn't recognize and welcome God's personal visit. NIV says, because you did not recognize the time of God's coming to you. So let me, let me state it, it, rephrase it a little bit. You didn't recognize this event as a God invitation. You didn't understand the moment. You didn't perceive the opportunity. You didn't awaken to him encountering your world. Jerusalem was living in a time where prophetic words were coming to pass. I mean, they were right in the middle of prophetic fulfillment. All the Old Testament had spoken about the Messiah, and now he's standing in front of him. Now he's walking through the gates. And, and Joel, I mean, uh, excuse me, uh, Zechariah and Daniel actually predicted the very day, Zechariah even talking about him coming on a donkey. And they're seeing all of this, and they missed it. They were living in prophetic fulfillment and didn't see it. Missed it all. God was encountering their world in a very profound way, and they didn't awaken to the moment. And this is what I want to talk about this morning, awakening to God encounters. God encounters. Let me ask you a question. Who, how many of you in the house today have had a significant God encounter in the last two weeks? I mean, think about it. Okay, good, good, good. It's a good number. I don't know what that number is. I didn't count it, but it looks good. But there are a lot of encounters, God encounters in Scripture. You know, we see it all the way from, from Genesis through Revel Revelation. Some of them very dramatic and nation-changing. Uh, some very quiet, uh, like uh, Samuel having his, his name 
spoken to him in the nighttime and he, he, he doesn't recognize it because it's in a normal setting and he goes to Eli the, the priest and you know, says, what do you want? When it was God that was calling, but it was a very quiet kind of situation, angelic visitations that set futures, like Mary's visitation by the angel, establishing her as the mother of the Messiah. Visions that challenge uh, mindsets, like Peter receiving, seeing this, this uh, sheet come down and all the things that he, he's always known all his life, he's not to eat, and yet being told by the Lord to eat it. Something shifting in his mind through that encounter, very dramatic encounter. Saul knocked off his donkey onto his... On the ground. Knocked onto the ground. And it totally changed, you know, everything in his life, including his identity. Sometimes, in the, as you read through the scripture, sometimes they catch the moment. And things happen. And sometimes they don't catch the moment. Like when Jesus went to the synagogue and he began to declare out of Isaiah, I am the anointed one who has come to give sight to the blind, to set the captive free, to establish the year of Jubilee. And he gives them all of that. And then he says to them, this day. Right now, this moment, this is being fulfilled because I'm here. A very significant moment, very significant encounter, and they missed it. They said, no, that's, that's just Joseph's son. That's just Joseph's son. And so they missed their moment. And we're going to learn a lot by, by going through the various encounters in Scripture, and they're important for us because as we read them, we learn things about what encounter looks like, what it could be in our life. But I want to talk about us this morning, you and me, our encounters with God and what those things mean. And, and, you know, are there God encounters today? Some of you raised your hand and said, yeah, had a God encounter. But I would like to propose that every single day God encounters us, significantly encounters us every day. And most of the time, we miss the moment. Most of the time, we don't recognize what's going on. Most of the time, we don't grasp it or understand what God's doing in that moment. Most of the time. Because he is encountering us every single day. To encounter means to come upon or meet with usually unexpected. To come upon or meet with usually unexpected. So what, is a, what does an encounter look like? Well, it can look like everything from a thought because the majority of God's, of heaven's instructions come in the form of a thought. And we have a thought, and we think we're so smart it was our thought. Come on. Or it can be an audible voice. How many of you in the room have heard an audible voice of the Lord? I have. Not often. Or can you, you know, you, you, you just hear it in your spirit. You hear it in your mind. Anybody around you is not gonna hear it because it was not outside of in our interior but it's real, right? You hear it, you hear it. It can simply be the peace that comes on you in the middle of conflict. God is encountering you in that moment. He's giving you peace. Or it's a sense of comfort in a time of crisis or, or a time of loss. That is God encountering you in that moment. It can be a fresh revelation of scripture. You read a scripture and wow, it all, all of a sudden opens up to you. You recognize something you didn't see before. You have a revelation of that. And again, you think you're smart enough to have figured that out. But it was a God encounter in that moment. It's a, it can be an angelic visitation. I cannot say that I've actually had an angelic visitation where an angel spoke with me. But I know that there are angels in the room right now. And they're on assignment. They're not here wasting their time. They're on assignment in their room right now. It's another way he has open vision or a vision we imagine. It's in our imagination. God gives us a vision. Again, you're not actually seeing it happen here, but you're seeing it happen inside internally. It's a God encounter. Prophetic word somebody gives you, right? That's, that's not just somebody wanting to be kind. It's a prophetic word. It's a word from the Lord. He's encountering your space in that moment be a dream. By the way, we have dream interpretation this morning. I encourage you, if you have some dreams that keep lingering, to go get those interpreted. Very important. A conviction. 
about something in our life. And, and it typically touches our emotions or even touches our intellect. We feel it. We sense it. We, we become atmospherically aware of it. Am, am I yeah. right? Okay. You guys, you guys with me? Yep. 100%. All right. Yeah, well, that's how you know. Right, something we know in our knower. Yeah. Right, we suddenly know something. It's a God encounter. Or a sudden courage that comes on us. Or an understanding that dawns on us in a moment. God is intercepting our world. And he's encountering us. He's coming upon or meeting with us in that moment. It's when we get a solution to a, or a strategy to a problem. Again, we think we figured it out. <laughs> It's a word of a friend or a conversation. How many times you've been in a conversation with somebody and all of a sudden you realize something? Yeah. Something dawns on you. And they may have said it, they may not have said it. What's happening in this room right now is the Holy Spirit is speaking to you, saying things that I'm not even saying. That's right. That's right. Yes. You'll walk out of here and say, man, Dave had a good word this morning. And it wasn't anything I said. <laughs> I just talk until he says something. That's all I do. In the telling of a story. Go to a movie. And you suddenly are impacted. One of the most impactful conversations I've had with the Lord was in the movie August Rush. I watched that. I couldn't leave the auditorium. I sat in the chair and wept during all the credits. I'm the only one in the auditorium. My wife left me <laughs> there in the auditorium by myself. She did. It's true. I had Sozo over it, and it's almost, I've almost got to figure it out. And I, I just wept. I couldn't, I couldn't leave the place because God was revealing himself. That young man was listening for a sound. That's what we do, isn't it? The sound of the Lord. And we follow that sound no matter where it takes us. Crazy thing. A news article that you read in a magazine or in a newspaper or you pick up something and it, and it just strikes you in a, in a way that everybody around you go, what, what's, so, what's so valuable about this? Well, God is encountering you. He's revealing something. We see it obviously in a healing, in a miracle, in signs and wonders. God encounters us in those things. And it, it's even when when a need pops up in front of you for somebody. Somebody has need of something. There's a need that suddenly you recognize and, and you realize you can do something about it. That's a God encounter. So here, let me ask this question again to you this morning. Who has had a significant God encounter in the last two weeks? Come on, more hands should be up, right? You are having them, you just don't know you're having them. Because we have not become aware of what God does and how he does it. So what I want to talk about is, is becoming aware. What does it look like? What, how do we go about it? All the times, all of these things we talked about are encounters in our world. And we need to grasp them and steward those encounters. So that we mine the wealth and the treasure that's in all of those. In this house, our expectation is people, whoever walks into, this, into these doors, through these doors, will have an encounter with God. Yes. We'll have an ex, a, a significant moment when things will shift for them. Yeah. They will hear God in the worship. They will hear him through the message. They will hear him in the announcements. In, in any way possible, they will hear from God. There will be a moment in the time here, even if they just walk into this place. It will be in the interaction with other people. That God is encountering us in this very moment. And we also have an expectation that as people of God, wherever we go, we carry an atmosphere that God will encounter the people around us. No matter where we are or what we're doing. Right? Sitting in a taxi, talking to the taxi driver. Home Depot. Yeah. Yeah. Walmart, anywhere you go. People around us can have significant 
God encounters because of who we carry, who is in us. You guys are scaring me this morning. I mean, we're salt and light, right? Those are influencers. Those are things that make a difference when they're applied. So as we walk through our world, we should have this sense that this, I'm going to use a, a word that's probably not, aura, this atmosphere around us that as we get closer, it bumps into people and it moves with us. Boom, boom, boom. And they're getting God encounters because of the God that's in us. It's Peter walking through in the shadow, heals people. And maybe we're not seeing people heal, but people are being significantly encountered. I was, in a, I was in a lift yesterday, and the driver, he just had something about him. I said, you a Christian? He's from Nigeria. He said, yes, I am. He said, I thought so. What was it? And we started chatting. He was a part of this church many years ago, and I dedicated his two daughters. Daughters are now teenagers. That was kind of fun. He said, I, he said it's funny. He said, you, said, you prophesied over him. I remember the prophecy. The one daughter, you said, he shall have the heart of God. He said, you are so right. She is just this precious heart of God girl. And the other one said, you would, she would seek the face of God. That one we're still praying for. <laughs> We, we look for, we anticipate, we expect God encounters in this house and in our lives. Yeah. Hmm. And we don't do that because we, we just want to or because we say so, but because he said so. In John chapter 16, he said, I'm going to send the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit will speak to you. He will encounter you. He will reveal Jesus to you. He will de declare truth to you. He will convict you. All of those things, he's encountering us. That's why he's here. Yeah. Acts chapter 2, it says, old men will dream dreams. Young men will have visions. Men and women shall prophesy. You know, what's, you know what the miracle of the old men dreaming dreams is? Most of us can't sleep, so they dream anyway. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, most of those old men. But let me suggest this. That God encounters our God. Oh, my Lord. I just had an encounter <laughs> of the time kind. Oh, Jesus, help me. Let me suggest this, that God encounters a God invitations. They're an invitation to a journey with the Holy Spirit, to know him more, to know ourselves more, and to know what we're supposed to do about our world around us. Yeah. It's a journey of discovery. So I said all of that to say this, an encounter, and li listen to this, I heard this, it's not, it's not original with me, but I'm, I've been exploring it. An encounter leads to a testimony the testimony leads to a prophecy, and the prophecy leads to a weapon we can fight with. Okay, let me, I, here's, here's what I, so I, I, an encounter leads to a testimony. Each encounter we have testifies to something, right? It witnesses to something. The testimony leads to prophecy. Revelation 19.10, the, the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So the testimony declares or prophesies something then the prophecy leads to a weapon we can fight with. 1 Timothy 1.18. This charge I commit to you, son Timothy, according to the prophecies previously made concerning you, that by them you may wage the good warfare. What's a good warfare? The one we win, right? Okay, so here's what I want to do. I'm, I, I really am going to try to do this quickly, but um, no guarantee. I want, to, I, I want to share three, three encounters, some of them you've heard, heard before, but I want, I want you to see them in the light of an encounter leads to a testimony, a testimony leads to a prophecy, a prophecy leads to a weapon that we can fight with. Okay. So last week, Ryan, Ryan shared a vision he'd had. How many years ago, Ryan? 26 years ago. 
But he's just now really seeing the full application of that, that prophetic word. He saw, he saw a valley, saw the valley, knowing it was this valley and knowing it, it had to do with this valley and this church. Uh, and it had some fruit in it, had some fruit trees scattered around and that kind of thing. And then, there then this fertilizer came in and, and fertilized the entire valley, just covered the entire valley. After that, the flood came, dam broke, water poured throughout the valley. And then after that, then there was fruit trees were as close together, fill, absolutely filling the valley. So his sense of what that meant was that the valley had fruit in it. But renewal was the fertilizer that came along and fertilized the ground and began to prepare the ground for an even bigger time of fruitfulness. And then the, the water that was the move of God that is coming, that is, in, is, is already here, is beginning to move through our valley. And as it moves through the valley, it will produce an even greater level of fruitfulness. Yeah, it's wonderful, right? So let's, let's, go, let's go through this. Let's process it for a moment. What's the testimony? What does it testify to? One, it testifies that God has a plan. God's not out there trying to figure out what to do. He has a plan that he set, it, that he set in place for this valley. He's the God of the universe that actually has a plan for us. I mean, I like it. <laughs> that he has value for this valley. We're not just some insignificant little place. He has his eyes upon us. He has his focus upon us. He's looking at us. And he's designed a plan specifically for this valley. It testifies to his, his eyes on us. Testifies that we have been in and continue to be in a God-ordained process. So what does that testimony prophesy? Well, it prophesies a harvest so large we can't contain it. Right? It prophesies that this is what's going to happen. So what's the weapon? What, how, how, do, how do we now war with that? Well, God has declared it so we can believe it even when it looks opposite of what he's promised. So the weapon allows us to stand in the time when it doesn't look like it's happening and yet say, God has said God has said it's a weapon of our warfare, and there is warfare. You know, a weapon of our warfare, it sounds really good, doesn't it? Love the weapon, big old sword, big old AK-152. But it's there because we have, come on, warfare. Come on, guys, wake up. It's because we have warfare. So he gives us this, he gives us this prophetic word, and Ryan speaks it in the time of the Lord over this house last week. And now we can stand in that time of the Lord and declare it to be true over this entire valley. I'm gonna move, I'm gonna move quickly here. So that's that's what we can do. That's, here's another one. Deb and I, when uh, when the Lord called us to build this building, we didn't want to do it because we have seen so many churches. And pastors who will go through a building project and the next, the next year they leave because they're so wore out. And, that, and there's been so much manipulation and control to get it all done. And that it just, it, it doesn't, it's not healthy. And we said, we, we don't want to do that. But the Lord really called us to do it and we, we took the effort to do that. We said we needed a million dollars before we would even begin. Felt that was a call of the Lord on us. And we were, in, uh, we were in Pensacola, Florida, and um, our heart's desire was, Lord, we want to build something that cannot, you cannot find the, the fingerprints of man's manipulation on it. That was our heart's desire. We don't want to do it. We don't want to build it. Otherwise, you either build it or, or and we'll, we'll cooperate, but we won't, we won't manipulate. We won't try to control it. And uh, there's, there's a lot to the story, and some of you are tired of hearing me tell anything about that story, but I want you to know something, that it has powerful impact around the world. And uh, so we were, we were in a hotel room, and we were going to go visit a prophet. This is the first time we'd ever done anything like this. Somebody opened up a door for us to go visit a, a very well-known prophet in, in the nation at the time. And we were going to go do that, so we were getting ready to do that. I got a call from a man who was giving us $600,000 the next day. And I didn't know it until that moment. 
and it would give us a it would give us a million dollars, move us from four hundred dollars in the bank to six hundred dollars uh, a million dollars in the bank within one day, and we were pretty excited about that. You know, it was pretty cool. Uh, yeah, and so we were excited. But on the way to 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 visit this prophet, we were saying to each other, "Is it really possible?" It was becoming more of a statement than a you know, a question, but is it really possible that God could do this? That God could really do this without us manipulating it and making it happen? We get to the, we get to the place of the prophet, and before he even begins to prophesy over, he says, you have said, and he begins to say exactly what we just said. That was even before he started the prophecy over us. And then out of that, he began to prophesy. That was a God encounter. You can imagine what we're thinking in that moment. Whoa, we just said that, and he just said that. So what does that testify to? Well, it testifies that, we, that he, heard, he, heard, he hears us. He heard, you know, I'm going to draw a few things out of each of these things, uh, and you'll see how it all ties together. He hears our cry. He cares about what we care about. Amen. It testifies that just... That what just happened with this man giving us $600,000 wasn't just because he was a generous man, but because it was the plan of God. That God was in the middle of this thing. And it, it testified that we're, we were involved in something bigger than ourselves. Oh my goodness, did we feel like this little tiny thing in this great big picture in that moment. Not insignificant, but just wow. God's doing something powerful that testified to that. So that, testif- that testimony, what does it prophesy? One, it pro- prophesied to us that he's going to finish what he started. He called us to it. He's going to finish it, no matter what opposition comes our way. That, that part of the purpose of that would be to testify that God could do this this way. That there was a way that God could do it without man manipulating it and making it happen. Certainly, we cooperate with him in those things. But it also prophesied that the size of this building was not our intention but his so what how does that how does that help us fight what weapons does that put in our hands well we get to war against doubt we get to war against the negative circumstances and there was a point in the building of this building when the money ran out and we didn't know how we were going to get to move forward so Deb and, my, and myself and our oldest son, Jeremy, walked into this building with just sheetrock on the floor, stacked up. We got up on the stack, stacks of sheetrock. I stood up in that opening there in the back of the, of the auditorium, and we began to declare the words. We began to prophesy what we heard that day, and we prophesied it into this building over and over and over and over again. So what was the weapon? That was the weapon, wasn't it? We could war against doubt and negative circumstances. When the money ran out, we were there. God, God fulfilled his promise, and, and we have the building. And now we can look at that same word, still. It still has life over this building. It still has life over it. Now we can war against the circumstances of loss and lack and empty seats. Because he has said. He has said. We have so many prophetic words. We could just say, he has said. So it's an encounter that brings a testimony. It's a testimony that brings a prophecy. It's a prophecy that, that we can now war with and continue to war with. Now, this third one, real quickly. I, I've shared this with you, but I'm going to share it with you because I think it makes this a lot more personal to you and me. Uh, I was on a, a plane coming back from the Philippines, and uh, I... Most often when I was traveling internationally, I was traveling by myself. So I was very used to being on a plane, not knowing anybody around me. But on this particular day, I had this just absolute contentment and sense of thankfulness that that I had somebody traveling with me. And it was so real that I thought the person was sitting in the seat across the aisle. And then I I got up to... uh, Go use the restroom and walk around and do little exercises about five hours into the flight probably. And I realized, wait a minute, I came by myself. But it was so real that somebody was there. I sat back down in my seat and I said, God, what is this? She said, it's me. It's me. I just want you to know that I never leave you, I never forsake you. 
and you're on a mission. <laughs> and it was an amazing moment. We, you know, we just shared some time together, fellowship together over the next few hours. Probably the best flight I've ever had. It's me. So what did, what did that testify of? First of all, he knows me. He knows me. When God gives you a, a God moment, a God encounter, one of the primary things he's saying to you is, I know you. You're not some speck in the universe. I know you personally. He values me. I, I, I had a sense of value. What's one of the greatest values you can give somebody? Time. Right? To be present with him. The greatest present is to be present. Is to be present with somebody. And he was, he was willing to come and spend time with me. Revealing himself to me. Because he valued me. Do you understand? When God encounters you, even in the simple way where you read scripture and suddenly it, it comes to life to you, he's encountering you and saying, you have value to me. I, I want you to understand this because you have value to me. He loves me. He even likes hanging out with me. I felt the pleasure of the Lord. I love the, the old movie, Chariots of Fire. You may have never, never watched it. Maybe you did. But the man there was, was it's a real character, a real person. Uh, he ran in the Olympics in the 1930s. And then he went on to China to be a missionary. And his sister didn't think he should be running races. He should be preparing for his time in China. And he said to her a lot of things, but one of the things that stuck with me all these years, he said, when I run, I feel the pleasure of the Lord. A lot of times he just, he just wants us to know his pleasure in us when he encounters us. What else did it testify? One for me, it was he, he had sent me. I'd been anointed to do what I was doing. I had purpose in this world. Now think about this. Every God encounter is an affirm affirmation of your value, his love, and his call upon your life. Every one of those. No matter how small or how big they are. You might not have an angelic visitation, but the peace of the Lord dropped in your heart in that conflict, and you go, oh, he's telling me he loves me. He's telling me he values me. He's tell, telling me he knows me. He's not, he's not ignorant of what I'm going through right now. Are you hearing me? So what did this testimony prophesy? One is that wherever I am, he's there. It prophesies that if I walk into a room of conflict, I'm not coming by myself to resolve that conflict. I'm coming with the Prince of Peace who can resolve that conflict. I can walk into the boardroom of the biggest corporation in the nation and not be intimidated because I have him there with me. You can walk into a situation and you think, I have no solution for this. I have no way of figuring this out. But you're not by yourself. You have him with you. And the one who knows it all is right there. Wherever he is, everything he is is present and available. So what's the weapon? Well, I just, I just talked about it, didn't I? We can fight intimidation. We can fight negativity and opposition. In every situation, it doesn't matter where you are, you are not alone. Jesus said it, Jesus said it in this world you'll have tribulation. But be of good cheer. Laugh heartily. For I've overcome the world. And he said, I'll never leave you, never forsake you. So the overcomer of the world is with us in every situation. I, I, I've become so aware since that encounter that when I'm sitting at a table having coffee with somebody, I'm not alone. We're not alone. He's there. He's there. Sometimes people share things with me. I go, oh, I'm inside. I'm going... I, I, I don't know how to respond to this. But he's here. He's here. Do we, do we really grasp that? That in this room right now, he's here, and he's not just observing, he's participating with us. 
the awareness of his presence has become so real to me. Gives me it not only gives me courage to fight for the things I need to fight for, but it helps me know that I can fight for others too. You know? No matter what the challenge God leads us into, he's, he's not ta- sending us there alone. You're on assignment everywhere you go. And the one who put you on that assignment is there with you. Every encounter leads to a testimony. Every testimony leads to a prophecy. And every prophecy will give you a weapon to go to war, go to battle, and win. So it's like God awakened us to encounters. Let me tell you very quickly how to do that. One, expect them. Expect them every day. Every day. Wake up every morning saying, God's going to encounter me today. And then anticipate them. That means you simply set your heart to, and, your, and you pray for eyes to see and ears to hear so that you recognize them when they come. You getting this? Yeah. And then mine the treasure that's in them. Not just say, oh, that was a good thing. That was a fun thing. That was a, that was a nice moment. God doesn't give you a moment just to have you feel like you had a nice moment. He gives you a moment because he wants to take you on a journey to discover him once again. Discover his goodness, his, his majesty, and discover yourself, too, in the process. So stand with me. So let's just, let's just take a minute to invite the Lord... To encounter us. Yeah. It can be this moment or it can be as you, as you go home. It could be, it'll be sometime today. He's encountering you every day. But to just pray for eyes to see what he's doing. We get so wrapped up in what he's not yet doing. Or what we don't see him doing. Right? Frustration is most often what comes because we're not understanding what God's doing in the moment. God, why haven't you done? Well, he's in the background working all the time. All the time. So let's pray for our eyes. Let's pray for our ears. Can we do that? That we would see what God is doing and to recognize those God moments when he's interjecting, in, in, just coming into our world in a fresh way and he wants, he wants to show us something. He wants to reveal himself. He wants to expose himself to you in a fresh way. So put your hands on your eyes. Lord, we thank you that you have given us not only natural sight, you've given us spiritual. By the way, as you have your hands on your eyes, we were in a meeting uh, in a school um, in Minneapolis, outside of Minneapolis, outside of Minneapolis a few years ago, and we were praying this prayer. And we had a bunch of, we had one woman who began to scream. Come to find out, she had taken off her glasses in order to pray, to put her hands on her eyes to pray for spiritual sight. When she took her hands off of her eyes, she opened her eyes and she no longer needed her glasses. She had not only received spiritual sight, she received physical healing in her eyes. So don't, listen, we want, need to start expecting some things. Right? Raise our elevation. Raise the elevation. Raise the elevation. Go higher in your expectation of what God can do. So as you put your hands, put your hands on your eyes. God, we thank you that you have given us natural sight, but you've also promised us spiritual insight and spiritual ability to see into the spirit world, to see what you're doing in, in this world and in our lives. And Lord, we pray, open our eyes daily to see what you're doing to recognize the the impartation you're trying to give us, to recognize the revelation you're trying to give us, to open us up to see, even in the chaos of our world, the encounters you want to give us personally that will affect us, our family, our homes, our workplaces. Give us eyes to see. Put your hands on your ears.
Lord, open our ears to hear. And I do pray for physical hearing in some. Right now, in the name of Jesus, you bring absolute healing. The people who are having difficult hearing in the natural, the very fact that you have compassion upon them and bring healing to their ears will also open their spiritual ears. You command healing in the name of Jesus over those ears. And Lord, we thank you for the spiritual ears to hear your whisper in the time when chaos is so loud and the voices of the world are so loud and the voices of the people around us are so loud, but in that time I can hear your still, small voice declaring who you are and who I am. So we ask you clear out our ears, take the wax of the world and clean us out to hear you clearly, to be caught off guard. <laughs> with fresh encounters. Lord, we ask for the angelic visitations. We ask for the signs, wonders, and miracles because your word says we can have them. We ask for supernatural use of your gifts in the world around us, all of those things that, that seem to call our attention. But Lord, even more, we, we just ask for the still small voice that absolutely changes everything when we hear it clearly. So we just say, God, you encounter us the way you want to encounter us. We open up our heart for you. We not only expect you, Father, we anticipate, we move to the place where we can be available for your encounters into our life. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Just tell him how much you love him. Just tell him how much you love him because he certainly loves you. There's compassion on you in your situation. the only reason we want encounters is to know you more. You are why we look, why we anticipate. Give us wisdom as we encounter you and you encounter us to understand its meaning. Lord, that we would not be like Jerusalem, that you would have to weep over because we did not understand the, the day of our visitation. Let us be sensitive to it, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'll put a hand on your heart. Lord, grant us a pure heart, a heart that will respond 
to what the word tells us, to respond to what your call is upon our life. Amen. Amen. So there is uh, dream interpretation. Don't ignore those dreams that keep coming. It seems significant. They have purpose, meaning. This is part of stewarding an encounter. So they'll help you understand what, what the Lord is trying to say in those dreams. So a dream interpretation team, if you'll go on over there. Any ministry team that's available down here uh, to just pray with you. God bless you. Love you so much. Thanks for your patience with me this morning. You have a great, great day. Uh, lunch is available over in the other room if you want to join us. And if you forgot to bring your own food, there'll be food there for you. God bless you.